one. Yeah, Tyler, you feel that groove. <laughs> Is that a groove? Is that what a groove feels like? Okay. Uh, listen, we want to encourage everyone to not change the station. This is <laughs> this is not pornography. Oh, uh, I didn't uh, see USA that. Weekly. Yes, we are back, Tyler. I, we are. I had to put up some kind of cheesy music, you know. I didn't really. Um, I didn't really. That sounds have like Sanford and Son, you yeah, know, crossed over to uh, Hugh Hefner style. Of, yeah, style of living. Anyway, <laughs> it's been a <laughs> it's been a while since uh, since oh, we've wow. been on here. Uh, <sighs> Memphis preview. Would be our last one. Yeah, yeah. Talking um, to Coach Larry Porter. That was a good. That was a good episode. Absolutely. It wasn't video though. No. So, so it's actually been a while for video since we've done. Video. I know we did the Marshall preview. Wasn't video. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was. It, it was. was. You was were on it? the phone, but it was video. Okay. Okay. So that would have been the Cotton. last one. That was at the end of May. So okay. wow. Well, it's been a minute. It's been a while. And and of course you know that um, our original plan was to do one every week. Of the uh, the previews, but like all. But what's an original plan anyway? Yeah, I mean that's, that's, that's rip not cool. Up and you do gotta, something different. You got to do something different. So uh, this week, of course, it's uh, July twenty fourth, twenty eleven. Uh, we're covering CUSA East first. Um, this week we have the UAB Blazers, which full discretion, obviously Blazer TV. We got Blazer stuff in the background here. Um, or UAB. It's guys. kind of it's kind of our thing. So we have a little bit more access here. So we, which which uh, you know we do want to throw out. Obviously, it's uh, the, at the end of this week, this upcoming Saturday, uh, and I'm sorry, Sunday. Uh, we're going to be going up to Memphis on Saturday. The uh, CUSA Media Days is this weekend. So I, you know, I feel kind of confident. Uh, while we have a lot of access here uh, for UAB. Uh, we're going to get a lot of access this weekend and, and right. for future previews and, and for other stuff that we're doing here uh, for CUSA Weekly. As we continue to uh, to grow that uh, that part of the show a little bit more and, and not focus just on UAB, but focus on the entire conference. Uh, it's going to be going to be a nice weekend uh, to head up to Memphis and uh, try to talk to several coaches. So uh, yeah, and players as well. I mean, yeah, there should be some some, uh, some one key one player. One player comes with each coach. Yeah, so uh, that's that's the plan. We'll be there next week. Uh, we're excited to bring you guys some stuff from that. Uh, I'm not sure. We're kind of figuring out what we're going to do. As of right now, uh, we thought maybe it might be good to kind of use that as an opportunity to to kind of catch up on our CUSA football preview. Yeah, we may have um, we may have like four previews come out next week <laughs> if we don't if we don't sleep Saturday night. We're going to be filming previews, and yeah, uh, you, um, you better be ready. So there'll be a lot of media guys. We're going to try and catch up with a lot of the the lot. local media that'll be there um, for their respective schools. So that'll be fun. Uh, we just actually get, got done uh, looking after some seven on seven drills for UAB. So we're a little tired right now, but uh, we're ready. We're, to we're go. working in, and we're we're ready to go. So this hey. week is. Uh, <laughs> Got that Burger King. Got a little bit of that Burger King (laughs) flavor. We're ready to roll here in the studio. Uh, So this week is uh, UAB. uh, So we'll be covering UAB. And and I want to say that if it seems like it's kind of unfair that we gave such and such coverage or, or just know that it's it's mainly just access i mean we, we're right down the street from uaB's campus so it, it, if we could well, get out to wait Marshall, a minute one of us is right down the street yeah right, right. I'm right down the interstate a little bit <laughs> further yeah so I hope you enjoy it still uh we're hoping to do central Florida next so that's something to look forward so that would be and, that would put us the next two would be central Florida and then southern miss before we uh hit up the west uh we will off. We will have to obviously speed things up, um, and, and we're going to do that. We're going to get everybody, and uh, you know, it's, I'm looking forward to it. Football's getting close. Uh, going, you know, seeing seven on seven tonight. You know, just seeing the guys out there, the lights on. Uh, obviously, they've been doing the voluntary stuff for a while, but that's going along across. Everybody's got that going on right now. Uh, if you ride out to your campus in the evenings, chances are you're going to see some uh, some of the guys out there doing that. Fall is, is getting here quickly oh yeah and uh, football is right around the corner and we're going to jump right in but moving on moving on interesting topic and by the way if you guys want to give us your feedback on any of this uh right feel free to do it we would love to hear what you have to say uh, yeah and you can you can email us ugh, let me get it up here jeez uh cusa weekly at blazer that will soon be like 
something at cusaweekly.com. So yeah, not just yet, uh, but it, soon. It, it, we're working on it. So we got we got to come up with what we're doing. But yeah, and uh, also I, I threw it out earlier. If you if you liked any of the articles we talked about today, or want to check out other CUSA stuff, you everything want to follow him on Twitter. Everything he that wants I mentioned, more Twitter followers. You're right, please I do. Follow him. If I'm, a, he's got more Twitter followers than me. He thinks he's special. I don't know if I do or not. I actually. think you do, but um, you know, check, you know, you know check who, that out. Yeah, every every you know article we you know talked about on, on my Twitter. Twitter. Who? Uh, and actually, like, started favoriting some of my posts. You ever heard of the magazine Mental Floss? No, I have not. There's, it, there's, it's a really popular magazine. And when they got, like, three locations, they started in Birmingham. Anyway, Mental Floss started following me on Twitter, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. Then he, they started, like, favoriting all my How do my you posts know? I, I don't it's know how weird. you do that. Say what? I, how do you read if somebody, I don't know that. They, they, they'll, they'll email you and say, somebody favorited your tweet. Oh, okay. So you you. Just, it's it's cool. You just never I, had, you you've never had anybody favorite your. You, tweet, you don't so. have to favorite much. <laughs> just uh, retweets are great. Uh, uh, but that's uh, hilarious. Anyway, if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, I don't really post. And, and and honestly, you can follow me. I'm at, uh, Mitchell C Miller. Um, I I don't really post as much as you do as CUSA Weekly stuff. I'm more of the Blazer side uh, because I got to manage Blazer TV. But you really do do the CUSA Weekly. We also have a CUSA Weekly Twitter. Uh, we've set it up. We haven't really launched it yet, so I want to you know start advertising that. But Tyler will be uh, handling a lot of that too because he just he, he if if there's something CUSA related, it's gonna it's gonna show up on his Twitter feed. So. Um, Anyway, we're going to go right into uh, our UAB preview. Uh, got a lot of stuff uh, to, to talk about uh, real quick. Uh, main thing to look at for UAB is last season, four wins. A lot of tough losses, close losses. Uh, but for the first time since uh, head coach Neil Calloway uh, has been on the, the program, there's been a major staff change, and that's in the defense with uh, Tommy West, ex-head football coach from Memphis, uh, has joined the staff this year as well as brought some um, assistance as well. So, uh, Tyler, you want to talk a little bit about uh, the, the new staff coming in and the new mentality on defense? I mean, I know you've, uh, you've talked to Callaway on a couple occasions, and uh, we've got an interview with him coming up, but uh, you've talked to the players, and they're pretty... Well, what, what has stood out to me, and, um, you know, if, if you... Look back, and, and if any of you want to check, uh, if you're, if you're uh, just a fan of the conference and you haven't checked out what we did at spring, uh, we, we did a really good job, I think, covering the spring game, and, and that is still available on the site. Uh, at the spring game, really what happened was the offense came out, and it was kind of like the knife-through-butter approach that it's been the last couple of years. The first two drives, the UAB offense just marched right down the field. The difference to me – was the players did not uh, – there was no back down on defense. It, it was a new – kind of a new look. They didn't get frustrated by it. They just went back out there, and they really settled down and competed with the offense much better than they have in years past. Right. Now, by the end of the game, the numbers still looked a little – Of course. – crazy because, you know, they're playing, got walk-ons and, and, and everybody else at the end. But you could see a new attitude with this, with this defensive – uh, team and and I was really impressed with that and you know they all you can tell that they all really like playing for Coach West uh, so that you know it's a it's a he's got he's really just simplifying things uh, Eric Schumann former defensive coordinator had a lot of uh, really technical looks a lot of uh, yeah. you know a lot of reads that the defensive players had to do Tommy I West mean, it was a difficult defense to run it was a complicated defense. yeah Tom, Tommy West it, it has simplified a lot of things swarmed and, to the ball and if you look at it. The, the stats from UAB the last couple of years, they should, it should have been simplified maybe a little sooner, and we'll see how this works. Now, um, the secondary, you know, has struggled in years past, but with this new scheme, uh, you also have to realize that th there's a lot of senior cornerbacks on, on UAB's team. So Tommy West didn't walk in here and take over guys without experience. Um, so if a change of scheme is all these guys needed, this defense could make a quick turnaround. Well, and, and that's that remains to be seen. You know, you got to see them in action. Uh, they run the four three defense, uh, and they're going to be running uh, the swarming to the ball, like you said, less less uh, trying to you know find out where the positions are going to be. Just kind of look at the ball. Everybody needs to know where they're going to be, and uh, 
So, I mean, it takes a little, takes a little bit of adjusting. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, they are running a multiple offense. They're, uh, oh, hey, before you go to the offense, one more thing I want to say. Yeah. In saying everything I said about the defense, uh, another real key point to how they looked in spring was a lot of the key guys were held out. Yeah. Uh, we had we had Elliot Hennigan, who may be the best defender on UAB. Uh, on the defensive line, Jamie Bender, Chase Daniel. You had numerous important guys on defense that were held out, and they still looked better. So when you get all those guys back, it's really going to be what happens in fall camp. Now, the offense, like you were saying, go, go ahead, is obviously going to be uh, th- what makes UAB tick. Right, and, and, and look, <laughs> obviously we're, we're UAB – uh, affiliated in a way, uh, not officially affiliated with anything with UAB, but we're, we're both UAB uh, alumni, so uh, we 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 kind of identify with the program. But this is not we're not sugarcoating anything. All right, the, you cannot continue to have losing seasons. Uh, this is kind of, in a lot of ways, this is the year to turn things around. I mean, there's no more excuses anymore. Um, there's, uh, yeah. there's uh, Brian Ellis gotta, says that in the interview. Yeah. When, when we interview, you know, yeah. all of Callaway's play, these are all Callaway's players. Uh, you got a new look on defense this year. Yeah, that, that you will not find anybody down here uh, on the coaching staff or any of the players that are looking for excuses. The, the time is now for them. They know it. Um, and you know, I, I think Callaway does a good job. Not trying to give away any of the interviews he inter- in the interview, you know, we talked about being a little bit more how UAB is more competitive now. That's not what they're trying to do. He knows that he knows that the time is now right, to move right. up the ladder. Everybody knows. The whole team knows. This is it. This is the year. Uh, if not, kind of accelerated by the fact that since last year, there's been talk of the on-campus stadium coming up. That's an important. Accelerates thing. a lot of things. It accelerates a lot of what we got to uh, what. The UAB team. I say we. I need to stop doing that. It seems you're, you're catching you're catching me, Tyler. You keep doing that, and, he, and it throws me off. But no, UAB needs to, you know, on campus stadium and in Memphis. Obviously, we talked with Coach Larry Porter about how important it was for for them to launch that uh, the facilities upgrades that they're doing, the fundraising. So, uh, but when you get into some serious talks about facilities upgrades. You also you also have to get into some serious football, and uh, that's what UAB is facing uh, this year. Uh, last year, like I mentioned, four and eight, uh, three and five in conference USA, finished fifth, uh, uh, four in the conference. Um, so, you know, it, and, it's and when you look at those games last year, UAB easily easily could have won several more games. Yeah, they well, also easily could have lost two more of them. They easily could have got beat by Troy and Southern Miss. Yeah. So you could have been essentially 2 and 10. You could have essentially been six, 6 or 7 wins at a bowl right. team. This team other than one game last year competed week in and week out. It was a lot of close football games. So it's not like you're talking about a team that's not on the brink, but that a lot of teams get to that point and never get over the hump. It's time, you know, obviously, and you'll, I think you'll see that in, in, in the interviews that uh, Brian Ellis, Coach Callaway, they're ready to get over the hump. Absolutely. So. I mean, they're hungry. They're hungry. and uh, But so are a lot of teams in Conference USA. Absolutely. Uh, well, I, 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 you wouldn't talk to a single team no. uh, in Conference USA that isn't hungry, but it, it, it's whether do you get it done and, or not, and, and that l- remains to be seen. Last year, a lot, of, a lot of other teams, a lot of other teams' fans thought UAB was going to be a sleeper last year. Uh, this year, you still hear UAB's name thrown out there, but you're also hearing Tulane. You're also hearing Rice. I'm hearing a lot about Rice. I'm looking forward to that preview that they've got a lot of senior leadership this year. So, you know, there's a lot of teams that are improving, uh, but, you know, everybody's not going to break through. Yeah, yeah, it's so impossible. It, it's, the it's, numbers we got to see what's going to happen. Don't allow it to happen. So uh, let's really quickly, before we move into the interviews, I want to go over this uh, schedule because we've kind of gone over the schedule for the teams. Uh, first up, <laughs> bad draw. Uh, or good draw. I, I don't I guess. think it's a bad uh, draw. It's no, no. I mean, you got it, you got Florida well, September tenth. Here's my here's my logic. Gainesville, Florida. It's at Florida. UAB does have a disadvantage. It's a disadvantage and it's an advantage. The disadvantage is you have the you have your bye in the first week of the season, so you play twelve straight weeks of football. The advantage is uh, Florida. Will will play against Florida Atlantic the week before, so UAB gets to watch them. Obviously, Florida's got a new head coach, they got a new offensive system. Charlie Weiss is down there. There's going to be a lot of changes at Florida. 
Um, they're not going to show everything against Florida Atlantic, but they're probably going to show most of what they're going to do against UAB. So Neil Callaway and Tommy West, uh, Coach Helton and the offensive staff, they're all going to get a chance to dissect that. And also, the other thing is UAB is going to be going into games for Florida, pumped up. It's going to be their opener. And the, you know, the novelty of the opener is going to be gone for Florida. So that could end up working in their favor. Not saying it's going to be a yeah. tough draw or not. Uh, Florida, you know, my, Florida, I don't think that they're going to be near as good this year as they even were last year. Could be totally wrong in that assessment. But Florida's a team I feel like UAB uh, could definitely go in and get a win against. Yeah, I mean, in, in the the fruit is ripe for the picking, so to speak, with the with the coaching changes and kind of the uh, trying to figure out what they're doing over there. Uh, Florida's offense struggled last year to to trying to get rhythm, and that's something that UAB did not struggle with. UAB did not struggle offensively yeah. uh, early on when they were trying to figure out the quarterback battle. Uh, but, you know, offensively, other than the Central Florida game, it's, I know if, you, if Central Florida fans are, are watching right now, they're saying, uh, you did struggle on offense because we whooped you. And, sure. and, yeah, sure, that, that, that was game the only was game that there was UAB, a major struggle. But uh, the rest, the offense was clicking. Florida, not so much last year. They had – kind of a similar kind of questionable quarterback situation. Um, and, you know, I don't know. It, it, obviously, uh, Brantley is that is quarterback. Jeff Brantley. Yeah, he's the uh, he's going to be the guy this year. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's a lot of question marks for Florida, and, and they might just uh, sleep on UAB. Uh, then and up next. I'm just not sold on Will Muschamp as a head coach yet. Well, and, I, I, and, and, and this could be, and I'm not trying to stick on this. This could be the next Ron Zook at Florida. We'll see how that goes. What? We'll see how that goes. But I, 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 <laughs> they've got, but but you know the Blazers have a tough schedule. You look at the rest of it. Um, they've got uh, out of conference games against Florida and Mississippi State. Big game with the Bulldogs coming to Legion Field. That was a, a near win for UAB last year, but I think Mississippi State's going to be much improved. I, th- I think UAB's got a lot better chance of beating Florida on the road than they do of beating Mississippi State at home. Um, so that's going to be a really tough game for them. I'm sorry. But that's the reason. But uh, going going forward uh, with this schedule, yeah, real quick, let's knock tough, it out. Tough non-conference schedule because yeah. Troy is never a gimme, uh, the, especially yeah. on the road. The easiest non-conference game, uh, and, and I'm going to go on and say it, if UAB really wants to go bowling, uh, the last game of the season at Florida Atlantic's a must win. Uh, they got to win that game. Florida Atlantic's supposed to be down a little bit this year, but you know they, they also uh, you look at their schedule and who they play in conference. Uh, uh, you got Houston and Tulsa both uh, rotating over from the West. That's not a good draw. Uh, and also, uh, you know, Tulane's supposed to be improved somewhat. Uh, not a gimme either. The the game against Tulane, the home opener, is is pretty much a must win as well. Uh, you know, there's definitely. Uh, well, I mean, the home schedule is, is brutal, not easy uh, to say the least. No, you Tulane, got, uh, Mississippi State, Tulane, which, as we already said, some people are saying is like a sleeper pick, maybe yeah. to, for some upsets. You got Tulane, then you got Mississippi State, then you got UCF, Houston, and <laughs> Southern Miss. You do not have a cupcake at home. No. Uh, if anything, Tulane no. would be, but that's your first home game. That's always when you work out. No, issues, and, and, so and I'm going to say, you know, that's five games. If UAB could somehow come out with a winning record, a three and two record, then this team's going to go bowling if they can go three and two at home. Right. So, I it's really, a, I a, really it's think it's that because I, I think that you, you know, I, I you're, you're going to beat somebody that that other that experts don't expect. That's UAB football. Uh, they've done it the last couple of years. I think Callaway really wants that signature at a conference win. I'm not going to say he won't. He, they need to get that. He's had some nice wins since he's been here. Before Callaway got here, they had never beaten Southern Miss. They'd never beaten Marshall or Central Florida. He's beaten all three of those teams. That's good. But, he also, you know, obviously last year uh, they came up short against Mississippi State and Tennessee and what would have been huge wins for the program. Right. Well, you, uh, you, uh, we're going to go on to the interviews really quickly. And real quick uh, also, uh, before we go into the interview, We do a lot Brian of things Ellis. really quickly. You we're, know, really quick. I, really quick. Really quickly. Quicker than quick. Um, hey, hold on real quick. Special uh, teams for UAB <laughs> last year was was a disaster. Well, it didn't exist. Without Trey <laughs> Raglan. Punting, uh, you know, and, and, and Coach Callaway mentions Raglan in the interview. Uh, but, uh, you know, UAB, a lot's going to ride on. They've got two kickers they've signed. 
how they're going to do on kickoff coverage and field goals this year. They've got n- new people assigned to the coaching responsibilities of special teams. So that may be as important as as the defense uh, under Tommy West. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you actually have staff now yeah. in charge of special teams. You didn't last year. That was a big deal. That's one of the reasons a lot of people were very upset with UAB yeah. uh, as far as staffing was they d- – there were two big issues that we heard about, I know, um, just kind of what the fans were saying. One, d- the defensive coordinator was not working out. The people wanted that to change. They also wanted – they didn't understand why there wasn't a special teams coach. Both of those things have been addressed for this year. Uh, you're at full scholarship. you got yeah. senior-led offensive line. The most talked about position at UAB by fans this year is the kicker. I mean, you look at it last year. You lost yeah. the Florida Atlantic game off a chip shot field goal. Five, any Tennessee. One, any one of five misses against Tennessee, and you won in regulation. And, and also, you know, special teams uh, breakdown cost the Blazers with two late fumbles uh, against Mississippi State. So uh, it know, wasn't just the kicking game. Special teams uh, in Special general, teams in general, other, other than Trey Raglan's rough. punting, and I know they're happy to have him back. But, but, but you know, that's going to be a big question for UAB. If they can get a salt, you know, get some improved special teams play and just improved, not necessarily dramatically, but show some improvement on defense, could right. be a real good football team. And one of the positions not in question, uh, what, obviously, whatsoever, <laughs> Brian Ellis, the uh, starting quarterback who earned the starting position last year, coming in this year as the the bona fide leader of the team. Tyler, you caught up with him er, uh, earlier this week, uh, this past week, and. Uh, Got an interview with him, so we'll check that out right now. Tyler Cantrell with CUSA Weekly. We're with UAB starting quarterback Brian Ellis If we as we continue the preview of the UAB Blazer football program. Uh, we want to thank you, Brian, for taking the time to be with us today. And um, the first thing I wanted to do is, is you've obviously are going to have some people who are not UAB fans that are, that are watching this and some UAB fans who don't know as well that, that don't really know your background story of what all you went through to, to win the starting job here, all your injuries. Could you give us just a brief overview of everything you've overcome uh, to this point injury-wise? Well, uh, I started out when I first got here um, from high school. I came with a uh, torn labrum in my throwing shoulder and uh, ended up it took the three surgeries to, to finally get it right. Um, I finally get my chance to play and I think it was 09 against Texas A&M and uh, Von Miller breaks my wrist, so uh, my first pass play I ever threw. And, you know, just those four things kind of all on my throwing arm, I guess, uh, kind of kept me back for a while and kind of knocked me down the depth chart every time. So you've overcome all those injuries. And, and I want to ask you about the last 12 months of your life. In the last 12 months, you know, you, you were in a quarterback competition that you didn't win. Then you come out and you win the starting quarterback job in a couple weeks in the season in, in dramatic fashion, throw for 2,700 yards. I mean, 2,700 yards. Over 29. 29. 2,900 yards in, in really 10 games, basically. So you lead UAB. You take the quarterback position by storm. You go through your first spring as the guy. You've overcome all these injuries. Plus, you've got engaged. Have you, have you even slowed down these last 12 months? No, it's gone by pretty fast. Uh, you know, it's, I, I was working hard. You know, unfortunately, I didn't uh, get the job at the beginning of the season, but uh, I kept working. I knew that, that an opportunity would, would show itself eventually, and I, I kept working for that moment. And uh, I think, you know, personally, I think I seized that moment, and uh, I've really enjoyed it, you know, getting engaged to my girlfriend of, what, four years. We met freshman year here, and uh, that was a – big moment in my life and uh, now just moving on to, to another season. Well, when you go back to that Troy game, this is the last time we'll go backwards. It, what goes through your mind with that moment after the game? It was such, uh, such an awesome moment. You jump the fence after the, the throw and, and just run straight up to your family. What's going through your mind w- when you uh, completed that pass? You know, it, it, it wasn't all, I guess it just wasn't justified, but you know, all the hard work that I put in, all the rehab, all the people telling me that I was never going to play, you know, you know, just you need to hang it up, you know. It's kind of a, you know, you don't want to sound vindictive, but it was kind of like, you know, now what are you saying? You know, and it was just a, it was a great moment, especially to, to share it with my mom, who she was the one in my ear all the time telling me, you know, 
you're still great, you're still awesome, you're still going to be fine, just keep working. And, you know, if worse comes to worse, you got a free education. You know, and I always just whenever I needed some, some, up, some I guess, bring, somebody to bring me up, I always just called my mom. And to be able to share that moment with her after Troy was, was pretty special. Since you've got here to UAB, what do you feel you've improved on the most as a quarterback? And what, what do you still want to show more improvement in? Well, I guess improved on the most is uh, learning how to prepare, learning how to watch film, learning how to, uh, to get to know my opponent. Um, definitely mentally is I feel like I've came the farthest. I still got a long way to go. Uh, I need to keep working on my arm strength. You know, I probably will never get back to, to what I had when I was a senior in high school, but I need to, to keep doing my rehab stuff to keep it strong, you know. And uh, so physically, I still have a long way to go. You know, not being able to lift weights for three years, you know, it kind of put me behind. But, uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm at a point where, where I can definitely help our team win. So I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. Last year, you guys were the most productive offense in UAB history, statistically. Now, you look at this year, you got a chance to, to be even better. What, what, is, uh, what all goes into that? You talk a little bit about your senior offensive line. You already talked to me earlier a little bit about your uh, wide receivers and all the playmakers that you've got, Pat Shedd in the backfield. What, what is this offense capable of this year? I think we got a chance to be really special. You know, we got, uh, we got five senior offensive linemen and, a, and another guy that's uh, got a lot of experience. Um, you know, and that's, that's the biggest key to me in an offense is because, uh, you know, unfortunately I'm not out running too many people, so I need a, a lot of blocking. Uh, playmakers we have, you know, we lost a lot of great players last year in, in Jeff and Frentrell and Mike Jones, but, you know, we got guys that I think can step up, young, inexperienced guys, but, you know, they can run, they can do some things after the catch, and, and I'm excited to, to see what we can do this year. Well, a little bit earlier, uh, he went through how he looks at a play and how he gets these guys ready at the line of scrimmage. And right now we're going to show you what goes through Brian Ellis's head as he's getting ready to uh, start a play. All right, what Brian's going to show us now is what's going through his head as a quarterback as he comes up to the line and takes that first snap, takes his step back. He's going to go step by step what's going through his mind and what he's looking at as a quarterback on the football field. Well, first thing what we do here at UAB is uh, we're going to look through the sidelines to get our play and look at Coach Helton and uh, a couple other guys, you know, dumb signals, you know, the, uh, the live signal. We're going to look at them and see what play we're getting. And then uh, what I'm specifically going to do is walk up to the line and let the line know what protection or what run, or what run play we're going to uh, do on that particular play. Once we get all that set, you know, I'm, I'm back here and i got to look to see why that, or look at my wires to see if they're press cover, see if they're off. So once, once we figure all that out, I'm looking once, once I'm saying set go, I'm looking to see safety rotation to see if they go cover two, if they, or if they stay in cover two, if they go to cover one, if they bring, because the safeties will tell me a lot of what kind of defense they're going to run, whether they're going to blitz or, you know, whether they're going to drop deep. Just whatever the safeties do determines what I'm going to do. So once on my first step, I'm still looking at the safeties, feeling who's coming, who's not, feeling, you know, whether we're going to get pressure or not. By the second step, I should probably, I usually know what side of the field at least I'm going to be working. And by the third step, you know, the ball's coming out somewhere to one, to one of our great playmakers. Uh, you know, you get a lot of guys saying you get four seconds in college football, but it'd be nice to have four seconds on most pass plays. A lot of times you have two and a half, and one, once you hit that last step, the ball's coming out. All right, now, in Conference USA, there's a lot of good offenses. There's a lot of good quarterbacks. And you've had a chance to sit back and see some of these uh, firsthand in action. What quarterback or offense in the conference uh, stands out to you that you think about when, in, in the rest of the teams? Uh, the one I'm most impressed with when watching him is the, the guy from Tulsa, uh, Kenny. I think you know, he does some great things for that team. Uh, he's got a lot of playmakers around him. But you know, running and throwing, I, I've, been, I've been highly impressed with their offense and, and him as a player. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot on our side on the east. You know, the, the guy from East Carolina, you know, does what, what they want to do really well, and that's sling it all over the field. The guy from Southern Miss is a playmaker. You know, he, you know, he does what his coach asks him to do. And, and obviously you have Keenum coming back at Houston. That's a, that's a really good player. But the one I'm most impressed with definitely is the guy from Tulsa. On the flip side of that question, 
What defenses really impress you in the conference? Who do you dread having to go up against? Or who is a challenge to go up against? Because I know you don't dread playing yeah. anybody. I wouldn't say we dread playing anybody, but you know, uh, Central Florida is definitely the, the toughest, de probably the toughest defense I faced last year, period. And that's including Tennessee and, and Mississippi State. You know, both of those were, were very good defenses, Mississippi State especially. But uh, you know, Central Florida, they're not, they're not real fancy. They don't do a lot of stuff. It's just what they do. They're very good at it. And, and I'm really looking forward to, to being able to avenge that catastrophe that happened to us down there last year. Well, really the only game that wasn't close last year. Uh, what, um, what team do you, when you, as a UAB Blazer, when you think about a rival, what come, what's the first team that comes to your mind? Who's the biggest rival? Memphis. I think, you know, that's the team that our, our fans want to beat the most. You know, they, you have that 100-pound trophy over in the coach's office that, that we like to keep around in Birmingham. And a uh, pretty neat little trophy. Not too many people in the country get to play for, for some ribs. So that's pretty neat. But I, me personally, I think the biggest game on the schedule is always Memphis. Well, you know, Coach Callaway, the grill master, some of you guys call him, it seems like y'all are playing for ribs a lot. But it's a very neat trophy, and I think it's added a lot to that rivalry. Um, how tough do you feel the schedule is this year for UAB? You have guys got several tough road games. Uh, you got a lot of the better teams from CUSA West on the schedule this year. It's going to be a, a good challenge for you guys. What do you, what's your thoughts on this year's schedule? Well, well, we'll definitely see how good we are. You know, I think we caught a bad break in having the uh, open week the first week of the season. But, you know, we don't decide that. I like to only worry about things I can control. And, you know, we, there's a lot of great teams, a lot of great players that we got to play against. but. I think we got a chance to be pretty special ourselves, and we got a lot of a lot of guys that that I like to go to battle with on our side. So, you know, it'll be week to week, but we'll we'll see what happens when it gets here. What are your goals for this team this year? Not just offense, not just Brian Ellis, but for this team, what are your goals for this football season? <sighs> My goals are for us are you know we we got to make it to a bowl. We got to get our fans back excited about about UAB football, and uh, you know. We don't have any excuses left. This is uh, all Coach Callaway's team. We all signed under him. We all chose to, to be Blazers and play for him. And uh, there's no excuses left. We got everything we need. Everything's in place. And we just got to go out and make it to a bowl and uh, compete up until that last game to, to win the East. In the trophy case, it's probably not 20 yards behind you. There's a trophy from the Hawaii Bowl where UAB uh, went to their first bowl game. Daryl Hackney was the quarterback, led them to that. How special would it be for you to, to be the guy who, who led the Blazers to maybe not only their second bowl game, but their first bowl victory? It would be awesome. You know, that's, uh, that's what I came here to do was to, um, you know, to be the guy, to be uh, somebody that, that this team leans, leans on. And, uh, you know, it'd be great. We walk into that uh, locker room every day and you see the, the gold ring that they got for going to that bowl for the first bowl game in history. And, you know, a lot of guys talk about it. We want one ourselves. You know, we want to be, be remembered here forever too. So. You know, I think, like I said, we got everything in place and uh, we're going to give it a run. Okay, now, final question. What is something that no UAB or Conference USA fan knows about Brian Ellis? Tell us something that there's no way that they could possibly know it about you right now. We've had a lot, or since I became the quarterback, there's been a lot of uh, stuff about my, my dad being a high school coach and teaching me a lot to play about football, and he did that. but. Probably nobody knows how big of an influence of my football career that my mom's been. You know, she's been out there, she threw with me in the yard and did all kind of stuff for me and was at every game supporting me. And, and still to this day, I can't, uh, I can't play a football game with at least not without knowing where she's sitting. Well, Brian, we want to thank you for taking the time for this interview with us. And I know Coach Callaway wants to thank you for wearing a hat that has his name on it as, as you're in full support of your head coach. Thank you for taking the time with us, and uh, thank you for helping us with our preview of UAB football. No problem. Thanks for what y'all do for us. All right, so we, we appreciate Brian for doing the interview and showing us a little bit of what kind of goes on in the head of a – of a conference USA yeah, quarterback. and, and so. I think, you know, I, I enjoyed him kind of talking a little bit about the other guys. And I think uh, one of the reasons I had him do that, the little tutorial about what he's looking through, you know, UAB's offense uh, functions like a lot of Conference USA offenses. The, the late call in from the sidelines, the fast paced look, uh, wide open style. So, uh, you know, maybe some, some uh, fans of other teams as well can kind of take something from how, uh, how a guy like uh, um, 
you know, maybe your quarterback at Tulsa or SMU operates in much the same way. A lot going on in those guys' heads to, to yeah. make sure that these offenses are clean. you know, a lot of people say, you know, <laughs> CUSA is defense. What are you talking about, defense? If one team had a defense, they'd win the, cha- they'd well, win wait, the CUSA Central championship. Central Florida. Hey, well, well and, and, and that's why I liked when, when Brian said that uh, he said that, you know, they say you get three steps, but that's not true. You know, that's a, that's no, he said you get, you're supposed to get four seconds. F- four seconds, right, right, right. And he said you're lucky if you get two and a half. Yeah, right. Okay, so uh, that, that's just interesting to me because, uh, you know, it, he's got an offensive, a senior offensive line this year, and he's still anticipating the fact that the CUSA defense is going to be rough. Um, so, you know, a lot of people talk about CUSA defense. And I thought he gave a major. I think it's a little under, uh, underappreciated. I think so, too. And I think he gave a major prop to Central Florida. He said that was the best defense they played last year. He, he placed them ahead of Mississippi State and ahead of Tennessee. So, uh, which, I, you know, that, that, that's a uh, – It's not unfair to say. I mean, not unfair to say at, at all. And I think, so. I, think they, uh, I think Central Florida had one of the best defenses in the country hands down last year. I mean, they just – uh, that was just a uh, they shut well, down. I would certainly hope he'd week. say that Central Florida was the toughest defense he saw, considering forty-two considering how seven. That went. Yeah, uh, but, probably a good uh, point. <laughs> uh, but you also uh, got a chance to catch up with head coach Neil Calloway for a sit down about this season and uh, kind of previewing what's coming up next season. So you kind of went straight to the source on that, and we'll check that out right now. It's Tyler Cantrell with uh, CUSA Weekly and BlazerTV.com. We're continuing our countdown preview of all the CUSA football teams and we're here with uh, UAB head football coach Neil Calloway. Coach, we want to thank you for taking the time to uh, meet with us today out of your busy schedule. Glad to do it. Glad you're all here. Uh, first, I was going to ask you, how's your summer been so far? I heard you got down to the Gulf Coast to get a little bit of rest and relaxation. Did that go well for you, Coach? Yeah, we've had a good summer. It's always good to uh, get away with your family and spend some quality time there. And We had uh, several camps early part of summer and uh, right after that we went to Gulf Shores for a week and, and have really enjoyed it. Well that's good coach. You kind of, kind of got into my first question was about your football camps. Um, kind of been growing in number and in size and kind of getting all over the place now. You're, you're getting into new areas. Um, how's that going? How do you feel about your football camps and kind of talk about the importance of those camps to a program? Well they have grown. Uh, ever since we've been here we've started, we had the own campus uh, camps. We had Started off having two, and and uh, for the older guys, and one for the younger guys, and and each year they've gotten more and more people involved, and I think uh, the reason is because our coaches do such a good job of, of working at it. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of these camps you go to nowadays, they're just kind of get them in, uh, get a height, weight, and speed on them, and get out. But you know, we try to spend quality time with them as far as coaching them the way we coach our guys here on on our football team, and. Uh, so they've really grown. And then um, a couple of years ago, I think actually three years ago, we started going to Dothan and Daphne, uh, Mobile area, and uh, those camps have grown each year. And, you know, I, you know, I was thinking the other day, I think somewhere between the eight and 900 campers or, or guys that we get to see every year, you know, between the two we have on campus and going to Mobile and Dothan every year. So that's good for our football program. Absolutely, Coach. And- Obviously, with the camps, we're talking a little bit about recruiting. And, and uh, when you first came to UAB, uh, you, you acknowledged that keeping guys here locally, keeping local recruits at home at UAB had been a challenge in the past. And, and that was going to be one of your priorities was uh, to, to keep more of those guys at home here in Birmingham. How do you uh, see the progress on that front? And where do you see that kind of going with the next couple of signing classes? Well, uh, we have uh, always tried to put a priority and a premium on, on local guys. Uh, but first and foremost, I think it's important to sign guys that we think can win the conference championship, and you also want to make sure you're signing good people and, and obviously good students. Uh, but we, you know, we do want a certain quality of, of a certain number there of local guys, and uh, we've struggled with that in the past. But I think the, to the, you know, obviously I can't talk about specific recruits uh, because of the NC2A uh, regulations. But you know, to this point, we are getting a, a good flavor of local guys and. And, uh, you know, we'll just you know, see how that trend continues. Well, Coach, if we, as we start the actual preview of this, of this year's team, uh, I think it's a, a fair, fair starting point to talk about the offense, which is what everybody talks about. 
uh, coming into this year. And, and your last two offenses have been extremely productive. They have actually, the last two years, were the most productive offenses in the history of the school. And this year, uh, it appears you have a shot to have a team that may break the record again. Uh, before we talk about the actual team, what is – what does that say about your offensive staff? How do you feel about the job these guys have done? Because you've lost some key players along the way. You've lost guys like Jake Seitz, Joe Webb. Now you've lost Jeffrey Anderson and, and French Rail Forrest, Mike Jones. And, and the offense continues to produce at a high level. What, is, what does that say to you about your, your coaching staff? Well, Coach Kim Helton is our offensive coordinator, and, and Kim is one of the um, brightest uh, offensive coaches I've been around. I've known Kim for – I guess since the mid '80s, and uh, you know, he just does an outstanding job. Uh, not only you know scheming things up, but coaching the fundamentals and, and doing things that you need to do to be successful. You know, and Tyson Hilton coaches quarterbacks and does a great job. Uh, you know, we've you know, Tim, uh, Tim Bowens. You know, though have been with us the whole time. We have two new guys on the offensive staff: John Wozniak and Rick Mallory, who come on board with. Um, Will Friend and Steve Davenport left, and I think you know we we have a great offensive staff, but it most definitely starts with Coach Kim. Well, you've definitely had very productive years here, and we hope to see that continue this year. And and talking about that a little bit for any offense, it kind of starts on the offensive line. And I was going to ask you to kind of talk about the senior leadership you have on this year's offensive line and how that might help be a catalyst for this year's team. Well, I think any any uh, time you, you start to play football, there's a lot of things that, that are key factors to being successful. And I think one of them is winning the battle up front on both sides of the football. So we do think we have a good offensive line coming back. I, you know, I think we it, like always, you 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 gotta we can't rest on our laurels. We gotta make sure we work hard and prepare this year like we've done in the previous years. Uh, we should have a, a good offensive line. We got a lot of seniors. You got Matt McCants. Terrence Edge, Greg Calhoun, Caleb Thomas, uh, Darren Smith, all the guys that are seniors and played a lot of football. And, and we got some good quality guys behind them. So, uh, you know, it's a unit as a whole that ought to be good. We have good depth, and uh, but we got to make sure we work hard when we start camp. Well, you've got those guys protecting the, the guys in the backfield. And uh, Brian Ellis had a terrific year last year after he took over as a starter. And also, uh, Pat Shedd came in last year in his first year and had a very good year. How, how good do you think that quarterback-running back combination can be this year if they stay healthy? Well, I, like a lot of offenses, we are a quarterback-driven offense. And so kind of the you know, way we go is, is kind of where Brian leads us. And we, we ask a lot of Brian. He did have a good year last year. I think he's got to improve in some areas, primarily the turnover uh, and not throwing the interceptions, which is critical. Uh, but he's, he is a tremendous young man that is uh, truly a student of the game, loves football. Uh, you know, his daddy's a high school coach. I think Brian wants to get into coaching. So, you know, he's a guy that, that really enjoys it. And so, uh, that, you know, he's brought a lot of leadership to this football team, not only offensively, but to the entire defense, entire football team, including defensively. So, you know, Brian is a very important uh, part of what we're doing. And, you know, Pat's a very athletic guy. Pat is a uh, – can make a lot of plays, whether it be running and catching and, and even throwing the football. So, uh, you know, we're certainly glad to have Pat there. But, you know, those are two important parts of it. But, we, you know, like any team, offensively, you got to have 11 guys on both sides of the ball you know, to be successful. Well, on the defensive side of the ball, in the spring, you, you had some injuries and some key guys were held out and, and not able to compete as much as you would have liked. But you couldn't help but sense there was a little bit of, an, of a new attitude around the defense. They – they fought back. They, they didn't give up. They, they had just a, a good outlook in, when you would talk to any of them. And, and maybe that's because of, you've got some new defensive coaches. Maybe it's just because of the group of guys you've got now. But with, with everybody coming back in the fall, how do, you, how do you feel about this defense and where it could go this year? Well, we really were depleted in the spring with our defensive line in particular. But I, I was very pleased with the secondary and the linebackers, the way they – competed in the way they improved and the attitude that they have. Uh, you know, we got to get everybody there. We're, we're a little, still a little uncertain in some areas in the defensive line. I think we have uh, one player that should be an excellent player in, in Elliot Hennigan. Uh, but really the other guys, uh, I feel good about them up front, but there's still a little unknown there. I'm not exactly sure who will be the starters, who will play, and, and how, they, you know, how, how they'll hold up. Uh, We'll be young at the defensive end spot. Uh, 
You know, we've got some junior college guys that are fill, you know, come in and compete for the tackle spots on on the inside. But overall, I think it's the best personnel we've had defensively. I think Coach West has done an outstanding job coming in here as our new defense coordinator, going and going through the spring and preparing for the fall. So I do look forward to be a much improved defensive football team. You you mentioned Elliot Hennigan, and um, obviously the defensive line is young this year. How valuable is it to have a guy of his of his talent and leadership ability to, to be on that D-line to help lead those young guys this year? Well, I, I do think Elliot is a, a very talented football player. I think he's got a chance to be one of the better defensive linemen in our league. Um, and we do need leadership, and that's an area I think Elliot needs to improve in. I think he needs to step up and, and take more ownership in, in doing some things. Uh, but he is a talented guy that has made a lot of good plays for us around here. I can't help, you know, when I first got here, you were you were first coming on as the head coach. And I remember the very first game was at Michigan State, and, and, and we were so thin at, at almost every position. You, you didn't have enough guys. Now here we are five years later, and you look on defense, and you've got one position that looks like it could be one of the best in the conference with the combo. What What's it like having a, a combination of uh, Marvin Burdett and D.A. Autry at the same position? Well, there are two fine football players. They're two fine young men, so uh, they're a joy to be around and, and really, I think, will not only be very productive on the field, but, but in the locker room and, and around campus, too. And, uh, you know, they, they are both are tremendous young men that I, I think can do a lot of good things for us on the football field. When we talk a little bit about special teams, it, it'd be unfair to mention the kicking situation. You guys haven't had an opportunity to see the new kickers yet to the fall camp, but how valuable is a, is a leader like Trey Raglan uh, with his ability to pin teams deep? How much does that help a head coach out and, and help a defense out having a veteran punter like that? Well, the, you know, the kicking game is a very big part of uh, the success of any football team. You know, really the only phase that I, I think I felt comfortable with last year was our punting team. And, you know, Trey did a nice job of, you know, punting the football. We did a nice job coverage-wise. Uh, we worked very hard on the kicking game really ever since I've been here. We've, um, you know, we've been, you know, shorthanded in some areas as far as personnel, which I, I think has hindered us. But, uh, you know, we're continuing to work hard on it. We've, we've signed two young kickers. We're going to let them compete to see who's going to be the field goal extra point guy or and the kickoff guy. But, uh, you know, we got to have those guys step up, but we also got to have – you know, all the other guys step up in the coverage phase of it too. Coach, when you uh, – every coach has a couple players that they – that are not – they feel are not mentioned enough in the media. If you had to think of a couple of guys who, who their impact to this football team is not measured in stats, who would it be? No, I think you always start with your offensive linemen. Now. They're probably always the most uh, under-talked about, you know, uh, group as a unit and then I think uh, you know the kickers but you know for this football team I'm excited about all of them I think that you know, we've got a lot of oneness a lot of continuity there and I've seen more leadership than I've ever seen since I've been here which is what we got to have so I think it's critical that we all uh, you know kind of kind of join hands and get on board and and all pull it in the same direction well coach when you came here you know, obviously you found facilities needed upgrades and there's been some steps in that direction already. A lot of UAB fans really don't even know about the weight room and training room that has been renovated and, and taken care of over here. What has that meant for your program for uh, strength and conditioning coach Steve Martin and the trainers to have that at their disposal? Well, we have uh, moved in a new weight room already. It's been a couple of years ago now in a new training room and I think both of them are first class. I think you know, not only in recruiting, but, but just being in an, an environment uh, and allowing the guys to work in. I think that's been a, a big plus. I mean, you know, it's just like when you walk into a new building, it makes you feel better just by the mere fact that you're in there. And so the fact that we do get to go in a, in a first-class facility and work in our weight room and our training room has a, a tremendous effect on our players, not only the ones that are here, but in recruiting. So I think that's, a, a you know, a, a very – good plus fours and, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to upgrade our facilities in the future. And also when you came here you were left with many academic challenges and, and you had to overcome that in your earlier years. You have an academic center now. What kind of progress do you feel like UAB is making as a program in that 
aspect? Well, I think we there's no you know been well documented where we are where we were and where we are right now academically. Uh, you look at you know what we walked into and where we at. Uh, we've made tremendous progress. We've had a you know we've worked hard as a staff. Uh, we've hired a lot of new people in the academic uh, end of it as far as uh, advisors and whatnot, which has helped tremendously. We have renovated the academic center, which uh, you know have we do have a computer lab and. Uh, some um, facilities to have study halls and tutors and mentor sessions in. So, you know, like a lot of things, uh, you know, it's much needed, but uh, we still need to improve in those areas. Well, obviously there's been a lot of improvements on campus since you've got here. And my, my last facility related question is, there has been talk of an on-campus stadium and back at, at the spring game, we didn't know where the spring game was gonna be because of field conditions. And you said in, a, in an interview that it was important that the spring game be on campus uh, to be a part of the student body. How, how important would an on-campus stadium be for UAB's growth as a football program and, and comparing it to a program like Central Florida's, which is, uh, begun to compete for conference championships since they've gotten theirs. Well, you know, you, you look at our campus as a whole, and I think it's uh, excellent. I think if you look at the rec center, the dorms where our guys live, uh, it's first class, the uh, eating facilities, the uh, heritage hall, and most of the classrooms are fairly new. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I think it's obvious that, that we do need to upgrade our facilities. I think they're you know, and I need to defer all this to Brian Mack and probably more. Uh, On-campus stadium would be tremendous for us. And, uh, you know, hopefully that ha uh, happens sometime in the near future. Well, Coach, going back to last year one more time, uh, this team, you about had to be in cardiac arrest every week. Pretty much 11 of the 12 games were close last year. You had close wins against Troy, Southern Miss, several close losses, from Florida Atlantic, Rice, uh, just to name a few. Um, what does that tell you about your football team being right there every week? Well, I do think we've improved. I think we've become competitive, uh, uh, but you know that's not you know our goal. We want to, you know, we want to win football games. We want to compete for championships and and go to bowl games. And and uh, and I do think we're close. Uh, but you know, I think we're at a point in time where we are a much improved football team. Uh, we still got work to do, but uh, you know, I do feel good about what we have. And coach, kind of wrap it up. What what would be your message to UAB fans right now? What would be your message about this upcoming season? If you could reach out to fans who've been season ticket holders since the beginning or a first time attendee, what would be your message about this football program? Well, I think in support, we need your help. We need your support. Uh, come watch us and get behind us, and, and let's pull this thing through together. Okay, we will. I want to thank Coach Neil Calloway for taking the time with us for an interview again. Um, it's been nice sitting here talking with you, and I, I tell you, there's a there's a grill right outside this facility, and, and from what I've heard from a couple of the guys, I think he's got another nickname uh, instead of Coach Calloway. I think they call you Grill Master around here a little bit. Well, we did have a cookout for the players last night, and uh, I think they enjoyed it, and, uh, you know, it's good to you know be in an environment with the guys where it's uh, not football or workout related and, you know, to uh, just kind of, get to know each other and, and uh, get to feeling good about one another. Okay, I hope you liked our interview with Coach Neil Calloway. Uh, really, you know, back-to-back -back episodes of CUSA Weekly. It's been awesome talking to coaches. We got Larry Porter from Memphis uh, last, and, and obviously this time we got Coach Neil Calloway. Uh, always different, you know, uh, talking with the coaches. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward because of that and, and having the opportunity to talk with those two guys. I'm just really looking forward to talking to more guys this weekend. Yeah, yeah, we're we're excited about the media days, and uh, that's that's basically going to wrap it up for our preview this uh, this week of of UAB football. Look out for our Central Florida preview, um, followed by Southern Miss. Yeah, and I hope that we can get enough kind of content um, through the media days, and then making contacts with people at media days to, to kind of to fold in the previews so that we want to make every preview a little bit better. Obviously, yeah. we caught a lucky break with UAB since we're so close. Yeah, uh, and I mean, we, so we, 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 we obviously and, uh, want, we want to thank UAB for allowing us to, to kind of get the access that we did. We did. Um, so, I mean, we appreciate that. And but um, we, we really need to get out there to other schools, and I hope that and, we can And, and hopefully get some door, get, knock on some doors this weekend and, and, and develop some more relationships. We're going to be working on that, so look for bigger and better things. Uh, also, 
as we do every week, don't forget we've already ran several previews. If you if you've missed your teams or or you're you're jumping on board, maybe you're a UAB fan and you you'd like to hear about the other teams. We've already previewed uh, East Carolina. Right. Uh, Nathan Summers of the Daily Reflector came on and talked to uh, Pirate Football with us. Uh, we uh, previewed Marshall, one of my favorite interviews we've ever done with a uh, play-by-play guy, 15-year guy, Steve Cotton, uh, who's called National Title Games, told us some stories about Randy Moss and uh, uh, all those guys who've been up there with the herd. Uh, good interview there. Check out that preview. And obviously, we've already mentioned we talked with head coach Larry Porter and covered the Memphis Tigers. So uh, definitely uh, check out those if you haven't already. And uh, – you know, if you're a Southern Miss fan, if you're a Central Florida fan, your your uh, team is coming up quickly. Yep. Uh, we want to just remind you once again, Tyler, you're at Tyler underscore Cantrell on Twitter. Uh, you can check out all of his uh, CUSA-related uh, stuff on there. You can follow me on uh, Mitchell C. Miller uh, on Twitter. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to have that CUSA Weekly Twitter that you can follow as well. Uh, if you want to send us a voicemail or email or anything, it's CUSA Weekly at BlazerTV.com. We have a voicemail. It's on the website, so when you click on it, just go to BlazerTV.com and click on the podcast and CUSA Weekly. You can see the number there. Um, Memphis Tiger basketball fans, do you want to continue playing the Tennessee Volunteers? Yeah, we'd love to get some voicemails about that. So, uh uh, also, we want to do once again remind you that we're sponsored. Uh, we want to thank Audible for for sponsoring us. Uh, you can get your own free audio book download. Uh, it's completely free. Uh, sign up, uh, put in your credit card information or whatever, uh, and then you can cancel, and the book's yours. I mean, it's not a you don't have to do it. I, I do it. Uh, I appreciate the service. Uh, but audibletrial.com it, slash cusa weekly is is where you can go to get that. Really good service. Book. Yeah, really good I mean, service. You, if you're a college around, student or if you're on the road a lot, uh, you know it's it's a new technology age. You don't have time to to sit down and read a book with everything the way the way the world is now. It's just another way to to get information into your brain. I I've used it for a lot of my uh, history classes yeah. uh, here at UAB. You got to read a lot of books, and uh, I mean, I, I my girlfriend uses Audible. I use Audible. Obviously, you've used Audible. Uh, so we wouldn't pump anything that <laughs> that we didn't endorse uh but we, we really do like audible and uh there's a lot of good books on there so you can get your own free audiobook at audibletrial.com slash cusa weekly and uh you can also get it on your kindle they actually added it where you can uh you can click uh send to your kindle uh so we tried that the other day uh on our kindles and it, and it worked pretty good so uh good deal. i know it doesn't look like I'm, but um uh, yeah it, it doesn't look like i'm a, a reader of books does it do I look like a reader of books? Yeah, I could see you hanging out in the library. Yeah. Yeah, over in the corner with the Harry Potter books. Uh, but anyway, that's going <laughs> to... <laughs> that's going to... I, 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 there's probably many Harry Potter fans that are very upset about that. But, uh, I'm just saying. That comment. Uh, but... I'm a Hardy Boys guy myself. I'm Mitchell Miller. Tyler Cantrell. And this has been CUSA Weekly. We hope you join us next week from... Memphis. CUSA Media Day, Memphis, Tennessee. Barbecue! Hey, if you see us there... Hey, you know what we look like? Check us out. Let's go.